Today, we want to take a look at an old problem that goes back to the beginning of the class where we want to find the equation of a line tangent to a curve at a given point. So here we've got a curve. It is a circle of radius five. I picked five so I could put the point three, four on it so I could pick a nice point with uh, integer co uh, coordinates. I want to find the equation of the line tangent of the circle at this point, negative three, four. Now, this is an old problem, and we have strategies for coping with this old problem. We find the derivative of the function, plug in the point to get the slope. Then we have a point and a slope, and from there, we can write the equation of the tangent line. So we do have a strategy in place for this. This is the equation of a line tangent to a function at a given point. So this was, I know this doesn't sound like a strategy, this just looks like an equation, but this is telling us all the things what we need to do. Plug in the point x naught, plug the point x naught into the function to get the y, the y coordinate. That's where we start. And then we take the derivative of the function, find the derivative of the function, plug in the x naught, and then that gives us the slope. The thing about this function, uh, this strategy is it relies on y being a function of x. So the necessary component for the strategy to work the thing that we want for this strategy is we want y to be a function of x. That's when our strategy works. It works for y when y is written as a function of x. Other things that we want to look at is that f prime at x naught, that is how we are calculating the slope of the line. The thing that we want to remember, the thing that the, the stuff that goes along with this is that we're describing the slope uh, we're describing the direction of a line with the slope, and slope is specifically the change in y divided by change in x. So this also has slope. Is the change in y divided by the change in x. That is how we describe slope in a linear equation. We specifically use this ratio how y is changing divided by how much x is changing. This is a very niche way to describe direction because it requires um, a flat plane. We have to restrict ourselves to a plane. If I have a line in three-dimensional space, I can't describe it as y over x because the question becomes, well, what about z? In three dimensions, there's an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. Delta y over delta x is not very useful. But if all we got is x-axis, y-axis, if everything is going to be glued to the floor, this, this is how we do it. The other reason that we do it this way is that it works out really nice for our derivatives, which is kind of the thing that we spend a lot of time on in calculus. So what we want to remember is that we developed a strategy when y is a function of x, where we calculate f prime. But we have to remember that this is designed for our, describing our direction, which is slope as delta y over delta x, the change in y divided by change in x. Any questions? We have an obvious problem with this problem, as stated. That circle is not a function. That circle cannot be written at, with y as a function of x. Not that there isn't a workaround. And I know a lot of you are already thinking about the workaround for this. Just do the top half, positive square root. But that is a workaround. 
and it's super useful. I'm not like saying that this is a bad thing at all. But the problem that we run into with this, this particular problem and this particular strategy is that the circle does not represent a function. So this curve is not a function. Let's say the circle. So in this scenario, the curve that we're working with, not a function. So the problem with this scenario is that the circle is not a function. Fortunately for our heroes, we have a workaround. So the, we to write the equation for the circle is x squared plus y squared equals five squared. So the equation for this circle is x squared plus y squared equals five squared. We don't have y as a function of x. So that's the issue. We don't have y as a function of x. Fortunately, we have a workaround solve the equation for y. That's what we always do. If we, we, try, we try to make functions, we try to make functions because single variable calculus comes at functions, comes at these questions with functions. So y is not a function of x, but we can describe the circle with two functions of x. So y is not a function of x. Y is not one function of x, but we can describe the circle with two functions of x. When we try to solve the plus and minus, that's where the two functions come from. So from an algebra standpoint, we're just taking x squared plus y squared equals 25. Subtract the x squared from both sides. That's a legal move. This is the same equation. But then we get do something where it's not the same equation. To get y by itself, we take the square roots. But there are two square roots. There's the positive one and the negative one. This is because even exponents don't respect negatives. Even exponents are your friends that are always like, oh, just cheer up, as if that's how depression works. Maybe sadness is an appropriate response and just cheering up is like not on the table. You know what I mean? When your friends like, oh, just cheer up, they're being a dick. They're trying to decide what your emotional state should be. Fucking negatives are a thing, even exponents. Why don't you like give me some space and let me be negative? You know what I mean? Anyway, and why is sadness the negative one? Why isn't sadness plus? And when we multiply by negative one, the negative one is happiness. Why has it got to be that way? Why is up positive and down negative all the time? It's propaganda. No, it's because we had to fucking pick one. That's really what it comes down to. So we got to pick something.
don't fall for big north. So uh, the problem comes around here. When we want to get rid of an even exponent, that introduces two. We get a plus or minus 25 minus x squared. Undoing an even exponent introduces plus and minus. But this is okay, as long as we understand what this plus and minus represents in the picture. What we're describing with the two functions are the two ways that we could write this, the two functions that it takes to describe the circle, the plus and the minus. Plus square root is the top part of the circle, minus square root is the bottom part of the circle. That makes sense, because there's y is some positive stuff, that's the top part, y is negative stuff, that's the bottom part where y is negative. So the plus square root is the top part of the circle. And the minus square root is the bottom half. So our workaround for this problem is to, since we want a function, our strategy wants a function, is to just use the top half of the circle and say f of x is the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. We're just going to grab the top half of the circle and say f of x is plus the square root of 25 minus x squared. Then we can do our normal stuff. Take the derivative, plug in the point, then we'll have the slope. Now all of our fun strategies apply because it's just a function. So f prime of x is going to be a one half times 25 minus x squared to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative two x. Oops. Two and a half cancel out. It's still going to be negative, and we'll have an x, and I'll write it over the square root of 25 minus x squared. Notice that the square root of 25 minus x squared is just the y. And it's convenient for us to do that because now we can just plug in the point because we have both parts of this point. So our slope will be negative, x is negative three, y is four, the slope is three fourths. Now we can just drop this into the equation of our line. y is equal to y naught, which is four, plus three fourths times x minus x naught, which is a negative three. The point is that we had to make this work in our strategy. We had to get a function for our strategy. 
specifically we had to get y as a function of x to fit with the slope that we normally write as delta y over delta x. How's everybody okay? If today, instead of like just wanting to talk about the problem because it's Friday and I didn't, I, like I had brought in a piece of paper that said find the equation of a line tangent to this circle at this given point, this is what I would have expected a lot of you to do. How's everybody okay? At that point, it would be less about me finding out about what you know about calculus and more about how much geometry you brought into the room with you. One thing to note is that uh, when we have a circle, uh, when we have this circle, I'm looking for the tangent line if I draw a line from the point down to here, these will be perpendicular. So that tangent is gonna be perpendicular to um, connecting that point to the, the middle, perpendicular to what would be normal to the circle. And it's really easy to figure out the slope of that normal. The slope of that normal is y is four negative and x is negative three. So the slope should be the inverse of uh, the opposite and the reciprocal, not at the same time and do one then the other. Make the reciprocal three fourths, make the opposite positive three fourths. Then since we have the point and the, the point and we just calculated the slope using some geometry, we can go directly to the thing without having to do the derivative. I would expect a lot of you to try to find some kind of derivative because this is calculus class. And in calculus class, we're supposed to find derivatives. Any questions? I'm sorry, Barry, okay? I really look super stoked. So. Yes? Um, we're trying to find the tangent line on the bottom half. Yes. So that's a great question. If I had, instead of putting the point at negative three, four, I put the point, let's say at negative three, negative four, then, and we wanted to do our calculus strategy, I would have had to choose the function f of x equals negative square roots. Let's think about what happens. If I multiply this function by negative, uh, by a negative one, then that just gets carried through and my derivative will just be negative three fourths. And that makes sense because if I move this point, slide this point down to here, I'm just gonna like wheel this around. The slope should be negative, but it should still be negative. Uh, it should still be a three fourths. Also, if we use negative three fourths, if I think about the point, the, the normal to the circle, that slope is gonna be uh, negative four over negative three. And so opposite reciprocals would give us a negative three fourths. Here's what you would want to do uh, here. So here's what is the, it would be expected of you in a calculus class. This is society saying this, is your problem presentation in calculus class. This is how it makes you, how to look like you're in a calculus class. Using the normal, that would be like, I remember some geometry and I'm not gonna be one of, like one of these Brittany and Justin wannabes. I don't know, do people even watch South Park anymore? Are the Goths kids still a thing on South Park? They're like, oh, I don't have enough hair to flip out of my face anymore. I used to have longer hair so I could like flip it out of my face more effectively. I quit smoking a long time ago, so. And then they'd be all really mad if I was sitting here smoking. So although we did have a professor, it was a national smoke out day. It was before like smoking wasn't allowed on campus. And there was like a table out in the quad. Hey, it's national smoke out day, you quit smoking. 
And this professor was a boss. She was sitting there. She had a cigarette and she was like looking at the table, having conversations. Maybe you're right. I don't know what she was saying, but she was standing there with a cigarette. On that, and I thought, boss move. What are we talking about? I mean, I know cigarette companies are bad, right? Cigarette, that's just like, that's just a given, right? Cigarette companies are bad. I, I don't mind recording that. That's not really a hot take, right? Philip Morris, that's pretty shitty. I mean, they're, 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 I mean I'm mean, i sure Philip Morris is like, oh, well, well, yeah, you're pretty much right. You're pretty much right. But what if we could make math that addictive? What if just showing math to young people like hooked them on math forever. How do we make our product, math, that addictive? Philip Morris is like, well, uh, nicotine, duh. But I mean, like without doing that, right? Is there a way to do that without like the loan? Some people are like, I'll make math fun. It's like, no, 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 smoking isn't fun. It's just addictive, right? So we need to make math more addictive because making it fun isn't as effective, right? Smoking is like, oh, smoking isn't fun. It's kind of a pain in the ass. People get mad when you do it indoors. Unless you're indoors at a fucking concert and you start smoking marijuana, then apparently that's acceptable. Yet if I pull out a big fucking cigar and start smoking that, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're smoking in here. Blowing fucking marijuana smoke in my face. Now, I don't really care, but it's the double standard that kind of pisses me off. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's all beside the point. And I think the problem is we got to find a way to make math cool because that's the hook that gets young people to start smoking. They're like, oh, this will make you cool. And you're like, oh, well, I'm a young person. I am desperate to look cool in front of my friends. Or, you know, they're not my friends that mom tells me because then I wouldn't have to smoke to look cool in front of them. But that's the way in. Somehow, math has to be made cool. But every time someone does math in the media, they're a fucking nerd. And then every time someone walks into the room to talk to you about math, they're a fucking nerd. It's like, well, I don't want to be a nerd. So anyway, then we just need to find some kind of chemical additive that makes it addictive. Then we wouldn't be able to stop people. It would become a billion dollar industry to stop people from doing that. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yes. On a side note, we always write y equals f of x. That's where that's our first introduction into writing functions. It doesn't have to be that way. That's just the way that we mostly do it. That's just like we had to pick one. That's the way we did it. We had to pick inputs to go horizontal or vertical. We chose the inputs to go horizontal. We just we had to pick one. Let's just do this most of the time. But This is DVD bonus material. This will not make the final cut. What we did was we solved for Y and to describe the top and the bottom halves of this circle. If we solve for X, we can do the same thing. We can solve for X. The steps are the same but we can solve for x. So x is plus or minus the square root of 25 minus y squared. What are we describing here? So here I have x divided into the positive square root and the negative square root. So in this situation, the positive square root of 25 minus y squared that's going to be where x is positive. 
Y could be plus or minus. It's getting squared and then shoved into this radical. But the X is the positive part. So in this case, we're looking at the right half of the circle. And if I write the negative square root of 25 minus Y squared, that's the left half. That's where X is negative. The sine of X is left and right, negative and positive. The sine of Y was bottom and top, negative and positive. So that's just going back to our trigonometry thinking. Where is Y positive? Where is X positive? Sine is positive, cosine is positive. So when we write y equals the square plus the square root of 25 minus x squared, we're looking at where y is positive. When we write y is negative square root of 25 minus x squared, we're looking at where y is negative. That's the bottom half of the circle. Note that for the problem here, if I wrote f of y is equal to the negative square root of 25 minus y squared, we could do all the same stuff. But our slope would come out upside down because now we're not writing delta y over delta x. This function, if you take the derivative, that will lead us to a delta x over delta y. So we'd have to flip that over. Any questions? How's that, bro? Okay. Super stoked with all the questions. So the, there's an inconvenient, uh, when we describe the equate, write the equation for this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25. I can't write one of the variables as, a as one function of the other variables. I have to write two functions, either the top and the bottom half or the left half and the right half. There are other ways to do things. The idea is that the slope of the, the equation of the tangent line wants the slope, which is a delta y divided by delta x. So I've got this relationship mm -hmm. between x and y. And I'm trying to find the slope of the tangent line. Slope of the tangent line is delta y over delta x. That's what slope is in this context, delta y over delta x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative with respect to x all the way through. So what we're going to do is use what's called implicit differentiation. What we have here, x squared plus y squared equals 25, we don't have y written explicitly as a function of x. We have this implicit relationship. What we're going to do is take the derivative with respect to x all of all the terms. Now we're not just taking the derivative of all the terms, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of all the terms. So I can't be like all prime, I gotta be d over dx.
this means that we're going to have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of x squared with respect, so we're doing this. So I'm going to find the derivative with respect to x of x squared. I'm going to find the derivative with respect to x of y squared. And then we'll find the derivative with respect to x of 25. We should be doing this. I hate it. Derivative with respect to x of x squared, no problem. That's like our easiest example. We can do nx to the n minus 1. The derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. In this next term, weird stuff happens, because I want to find the derivative with respect to x of y squared. So when I write 2y, that's the derivative with respect to y. So we have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. So this 2y, that's the derivative with respect to y. The chain rule says that we have to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. The derivative of 25 with respect to x is still 0, because 25 is just a constant. So what we're doing here, when we write 2y, that's the derivative with respect to y. So the chain rule says now multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. What we're looking for mm -hmm. is slope, and slope is delta y over delta x. So I'm going to solve this for dy. So that dy dx, that is the slope that we are looking for. So we're going to solve for dy dx. So 2y times dy dx. Is equal to negative 2x. Our strategy for solving for something is to get all the terms that don't have that thing on the other side and then divide by the coefficient of that thing. Now I'll divide both sides by 2y. And notice that this is the same expression that we had on the previous page. When we did the derivative with, when we used the chain rule before, when we used the chain rule before, instead of having y, we had, were able to write square root of 25 minus x squared. So this matches up with the expression that we had before, negative x over y. In the previous formulation of the problem, we wrote y as a function of x. We had written y as the square root of 25 minus x squared. 
So this is just carrying all that baggage for us. So that's good. We did the pro went the problem went through the problem with a different technique and ended up at the same place. If you change techniques and get a different result, those aren't the same techniques. They 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 don't do the same thing. You can't be like, oh, let's just agree to disagree. It's like no, no. questions? How's everybody okay? Everybody looks super still. Y'all look like this. On one hand, I try to avoid swearing in class because it, it, it gets re, it's, gets, it's a behavior that gets reinforced. Because early, but so on one hand, you want to avoid swearing in class because it's a behavior that will get reinforced. When a teacher comes in and it's like a formal, very sophisticated environment like a calculus class, I think he's out and all that. And the teacher starts dropping F-bombs, it's kind of funny and then students will laugh at it. But the problem is, is the same thing that happens when children start swearing. Because when children start swearing, what do all the adults minus the parents do? Like if a toddler came walking in here and is like, oh, fuck, right? That's what you would do, you would laugh. And what does the toddler get from that? That's what we call positive reinforcement. The toddler's like, oh, I just made everybody happy, in the room happy, except for mom, by using that word. I'm gonna do that again. So, so the kid's like, oh, fuck. And everybody's like, oh, ah, that's funny when a kid swears and the mom's like, oh, no, don't say that. And the kid's like, oh, 40 to one, mom. Fuck, 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 right? And that's fucking hilarious because all the adults are like laughing. Mom might be horrified, but, Everybody else is laughing, so the kid's like, oh, this is a strategy. I'm gonna get laughs with this. Sometimes you see this in professional comedians. Not for very long, because they're like, oh, so all you're doing is swearing? And they're like, oh, yeah. Well, off to the right? The same kind of thing happens with teacher. Teacher walks in. Like, imagine in high school. I don't know if this happened in your high school. In high school, the first time a teacher dropped an F-bomb in class. Not in anger, just like casually. Oops, I fucked that up. And then they go, oh. and the students are like, oh, that was funny. You know what I mean? So, so on the other hand, I have to swear so much that it just becomes blase. It's just another word in my vocabulary. See, now no one gives a shit when I swear. So the other thing that we have another strategy that we have is to just change the way that we're describing the circle. Instead of trying to make a relate uh, require x and y the two coordinates to be functions of one as a function of each other or write an equation where the x and y are related, keep the x and y separate.
So instead of trying to find a relationship between X and Y, either with an equation or a function, describe X and Y independently of each other. We'll define x and y as functions of some parameter. x and y are going to be coordinates. The parameter is not going to be something that's physically represented in the system with an axis. It's something that's like running in the background. So x and y are the coordinates. These are, are the coordinates. And the parameter is, is not one of the coordinates. So instead of making a relationship between X and Y, we're going to make X and Y functions of some other coordinate that's not physically represented in our um, drawing. It's not a coordinate. It's just something to tell, to describe. Uh, it's just something running in the background telling us the X coordinates and the Y coordinate independent of each other. So this is going to be our thing, is to describe things with parametric equations. But this will have to wait because I was supremely distracted and talking very slowly. I can tell I was talking very slowly and also very distracted because everybody is mostly asleep. For those of you who are awake, up, some more people are waking up. Everybody else was asleep. I just want you to know that. You were the only person that was awake this whole hour. Everybody else just woke up. People in the back room, I don't think that's true. People in the front of them are like, oh, that could be true. All right, that's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for this week. I will see you all on Monday. Everybody have a good weekend, and thanks for playing.